Virtual Pinball is a visually and computationally demanding genre of gaming. The computer that came with my Creative Arcade's Virtual Pinball Machine was adequate, but I wanted to do more, such as drive a 4K playfield display and use my Virtual Pinball cabinet as an input device for Virtual Reality Pinball. In this video, I'll take you through the transformation of my original computer into a virtual pinball powerhouse. The motherboard that came with my machine did not support modern CPUs or memory. I purchased an MSI Mortar B365M motherboard for $50. This motherboard supports DDR4 memory and Intel 8th and 9th generation CPUs. It's not cutting edge, but still a vast improvement. I purchased 32 gigabytes of Corsair DDR4 memory. It was surprisingly hard to find the right memory used at a decent price. I ended up purchasing it new from the manufacturer for $100 plus taxes and shipping. Next, I purchased an Intel i5-9400 CPU on Facebook Marketplace for $100 plus shipping and taxes. It was the fastest processor I could find at a reasonable price that was compatible with my new motherboard. My next purchase was the GPU. Supply chain issues due to the COVID-19 pandemic and crypto mining has created a perfect storm for outrageous prices for GPUs. Due to chip shortages, even older used CPUs were selling for a premium price. As a result, I went through a series of stepwise upgrades until I found a great deal on a nearly top of the line GPU. My first purchase was an NVIDIA GTX 970. This card was leaps and bounds better than the card that came with my machine, but it's not VR capable. For virtual pinball, however, frame rate and visual quality is king, so it was a worthwhile upgrade for the time being. I immediately ran into a problem trying to install this card. The form factor of the new card did not fit within my computer case. To remedy this, I used a Dremel tool to cut a notch in the back of the case, allowing the GPU to hang out the back. As a precaution, I used insulating tape around the opening to prevent the card from shorting against the case. GPU prices started to drop around June. As a result, people were upgrading to newer cards and older cards started to flood the used marketplace. I found a MSI GTX 1070 Ti card for $200. This was a great price and it was a huge upgrade over the GTX 970 card I was using. Luckily, I already had the notch cut out in the computer case so it fit without any problem. I did, however, have a problem with the power. The power supply unit, or PSU, was from my original machine and was only 400 watts. This wasn't going to provide enough power for the new card. I purchased a used 750 watt power supply for $50 on Facebook Marketplace. This card served me very well for a couple of months, but is still not VR capable. I kept my eye out for deals on higher performance GPUs. I recently found a NVIDIA 3080 Ti Founders Edition GPU. Until the release of the 3090 series, this was a top of the line GPU and for most purposes still is. The card was practically brand new and I purchased it for $825. This is quite a savings over retail. I installed it and immediately noticed some issues indicative of inadequate power. I had to upgrade my PSU again to provide more power. I purchased the Thermaltake 1200 watt power supply on Facebook Marketplace for $50. I was excited since this was a great price for a quality PSU. Unfortunately, it was defective. I ended up ordering a new supply on Amazon. It's an EVGA Supernova 850 watt power supply for $130. With the power supply issues resolved, I now have a machine that while not quite ready for VR, is a virtual pinball powerhouse. On most tables, I see 200 plus frames per second with all of the enhancements, such as lighting effects and anti-aliasing cranked up to maximum. It makes a huge difference over the original computer with respect to my virtual pinball experience. The next steps will be another upgrade to the motherboard and processor. I have my eye on a MSI Mortar B550 motherboard and an 11th generation Intel processor. Then I will be ready for VR. In future videos, I will also upgrade the Playfield display to 4K, install surround sound feedback, and convert my classic 4 to 1 aspect ratio DMD to the modern 16 by 9 aspect ratio format. 